Hello everyone, I'm Josh Garrett and recently our father wanted to conduct an exam in Webflow. So before the exam I learned about Webflow, whatever I need to know. And then after that, on the day of uh, the exam, our father asked us to choose from three websites to take as a reference. So we analyzed the three websites. I chose the easiest one out of them because after all this was my first exam on Webflow. So um, I chose the simplest one which was called DevBook. So after choosing our reference website, we were asked to um, copy the reference website in Webflow. Of course, it's not like you copy the HTML code and paste it in Webflow, but it's more or less using our own creativity to uh, copy the website. This is so that we can improve our website making skills in Webflow. Just yesterday, we had that exam and I finished making my, my website, which you can see right here. And this video is actually part of my exam. It is to show and present my website and my thought process and how I made that website. Because after all, me and my brother would have copied the same website so it would look identical. The only thing that matters is the process, which is what I'm going to be showing you in this video. Now let us go over to my computer and I'll show you my process. This is the reference website my father gave us to replicate into Webflow. Now the first thing I did was look around in the website to see what I could expect. I did this only for a while and I instantly started downloading every image uh, so that I can insert it into Webflow in the assets page. After I inserted all the assets, it was time to start building. First of course was the header. I just simply added a section, then a div block, and inside that was the image and the heading, which is right here. There's nothing much to explain here, so I'll move on to the next section. Here I added a, a, a section, a container, and inside that are two columns. In the first column, I added an image and a div block containing the link text. And on the other column, there are two div blocks. One had a heading, a text block, and two buttons. Now, while I was making this, that's when I encountered my first problem on the buttons. The problem was I didn't know how to uh, increase the size of the button without increasing the size of the text or the padding. I'll show you how I did it. First of all, of course, I added a button. It'll look something like this when inserted. I'll just align it to the center. Now, I simply uh, change the radius to max and I'll just leave the color as it is for now. Then I just change the padding to 2020 so that the uh, width is a bit larger. And that's when I discovered the size panel and I simply changed uh, the size as it is. Now as you can see the button isn't really like the text isn't really aligned with the button and so for that I just changed the display to flex and align it to the center. And then if you want to know how I made this hovering animation all you have to do is click this down arrow click on hover and then you can edit it in whatever way you like. For example you can change the width and the height. I'll just change it slightly. And you can also change the color, maybe a darker blue. So just remove the hover thing and every time you hover, you can see that it changes. That's what I did here. Then second was the quote carousel. As you can see in this reference website, the quote keeps on moving. So to figure out how to do that, I simply went into inspect element and I found out that it's called a quote carousel. Using that knowledge, I simply searched on YouTube and found an element called the slider. I'll insert it here to show you. As you can see, this is the slider. It acts like div blocks that switch around. So to change the color of the slider itself, you can just go to the slider and change the color. Pretty self-explanatory. And then you can remove the arrows if you want, 
by changing the display to none. The reason you can't just delete them is because if you do, it just deletes the whole slider, which was a problem I encountered when making this. After removing the arrows, you're left with these two buttons, which are for navigating between those slides. That is exactly what I did here to navigate between these codes. Inside that, you can just add div blocks like I did here. I added a block code, a div block containing an image and the text block. After that, we come to the next section, which includes a heading and a text block. Then a new element, which is a grid. Let me show you quickly. So first I inserted a grid, as you can see here, we can edit a grid as such. Now, if you try adding, let's say a text and a heading, let's say we try to add that. So we can insert that into the grid. And if we try adding a heading as well, it just doesn't work. As you can see, it moves it into different grid blocks. The way you can solve that is by adding a div block inside the grid and then moving the heading and the div uh, and the text inside of the div block. So now they're in one whole block. This is what I did here with the image, the grid heading and the grid text. Anyway, after that, we have this section, which is pretty simple. I just added an image and a heading, of course, and then added a div block containing many other div blocks, which contained the checker mark image and the text. Again, I repeated this again and again. I know I could have used a grid, but at that time it just didn't strike me. And I used a button with the margin set to 50 so that it can be in the center. After that, we have the who this book is for section, which again is, uh, I took a similar approach to the previous section. I just um, added a div block with a icon and the heading uh, together. And then I simply copy and paste it again and again. Again, I could have used a grid, but I, it just didn't strike me at that time. Then we have a div block with something interesting. It's a um, text box where you can just enter some into your email and you can send it to get a free preview of the book. Here's how I did it. I added a div block into the container. Then I added headings, whatever I wanted. And then I added a form block into the div block. Now here I just want the email address so I just deleted uh, their name and then that was it. All I had to do was just change the div block to flex and center it. After that I just customized it to my liking and that was it. And that's how I got this get a free preview uh, page. After that we have this section book reviews. Again I used a grid but this time it was a bit uh, different. I used two grids. One grid was three rows and one column, and then the other grid had two rows and one column. This was because I did not know how to make it into one singular grid. Then I simply added a button, heading, and text. And finally, we have this section, which I simply changed the section color to orange, add a container, an image, and a heading, a text follow author heading and then we have these socials let me show you how these social work of course i'll insert it into container first you add a link block and inside that you can actually add an image whatever you like i'm just not adding an image right now just to showcase but in the url you can just change it to whatever url you want and in the link block you can change the url to whatever you'd like and so if you add an image inside and you click the image it'll take you to the url which is what i did here and finally a small text uh with design with love by xiaoing riley this was very simple i started a text block an image and again another text block that's it for this video thanks for watching and i hope you like this video bye